Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everybody. I've got a special treat for you guys. We have been trying to kind of complete the Spanish experience with visiting a bullfight, but when we were in Sevilla, we couldn't get tickets. It was actually the day we got there, it was raining, and it was actually the last bullfight of the season we thought that because of the rain some people wouldn't go but it's such a big deal in that town long story short we couldn't get tickets so here in ronda there is also a very strong and ancient bullfighting tradition so we decided to come and do the tour it's a self-guided tour and i'm going to walk you through the complex at the bull ring in ronda this bull ring was built in the late 1500s, I think 1570, 1573, and it is really, really cool. So we're going to try to do it quick, and I'm going to run you through it. Okay, right in front of me is the bull ring itself. So this big, round, Moorish colored building is the bull ring, and that's opened, open air. To my left right here is the exercise ring for the bulls. So this is probably where the matadors would practice with the bulls and that type of thing. What you'll notice as we get over here is a doorway, okay? And we all know bulls are big, we all know bulls are dangerous, right? So this entire complex designed again in the 1500s was designed to basically keep you from getting killed by the bull. Okay, so here we have a doorway and you can see there's a rope and the rope would swing the door open, okay? So basically the bull would be transferred through this series of locks, if you will. Not a boat lock that raises you and lowers you, but a lock that keeps you from getting trampled and killed by the bull. I'm kind of doing this backwards. So there's the practice ring. Here is the area of transition where they could bring the bulls through that door, that door, that door, or that door. This is incredibly well thought out. I mean, just think about this. This was built in the 1500s, okay? It's still operational to this day. Behind the practice ring are stalls. You can see the doors. Through, through this series of steel doors, the bull would be brought to here. And then from this quadrant of four doors, he could be brought that way, to more stables and to the bull ring. He could be brought this way to the practice ring, or he could be brought this way, and I'm assuming that this is where they wash the bulls, get them pretty, the grooming, the maintenance, taking care of them, etc. There's the cauldron for the water, and there's a series of drains. I don't think you can see it in the video, but the floor is sloped very slightly. It probably has a five degree grade or a seven degree grade. So the water will flow into these channels. This is just amazing technology for the 1500s. Now, as we go this way, you'll see a, another series of doors. So this series of doors, the bull would come to here, the door behind him closes. Now this door opens up and then it closes. This door opens up, then it closes. And we continue around. Another door opens, closes. This is all designed to be done from up here, safely away from the 2,000 pound bull. This is really cool. Yeah. That small passage, I think that's for humans. Oh yeah. So the bull cannot pass. Exactly. Good observation. So I'm not sure the exact technology here. It looks like they could put the bull in here and perhaps I'm not even sure what they would do. But there's a small passive way where the bull will not be able to get through, 
but a human can get through. So I'm not exactly sure, maybe one of my viewers or somebody that has knowledge of this will chime in in the comments. Okay, so from here, the bull would go basically to the ring. So there's the ring and we're going this way. Here are more stables. Over here you actually have horse stables and we're going to do another real quick video for the horse fans and tell you about the very famous riding school that King Philip founded here also in the 1500s. But we're going to do that as a separate shoot. So here are more bull stables and you can see that they're numbered. It looks like uh, that's five, four, six, etc. And again, the entire contraption, this, this complex is, is just incredibly well thought out. It's designed so there, the human doesn't have to go down there and open the door and get crushed by the 2,000 pound bull. So here's a door. This system of pulleys right here, it's 100% functional. The bull would come that way or go this way. And down that way, it looks like is the entrance to the bull ring. Really, really just super neat. Okay, these are screwed shut. But I would imagine that this is where they could drop in the food. Okay, you see each bull has one of these. I would imagine that this is where, I mean, these are big, dangerous animals. It's not like a horse. Okay, they want to kill you. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that this would be where they would load food in for the bulls. Just incredible technology. Just blows my mind that they developed this in the 1500s and that it's still fully functional. It's an, it's an original form today. I don't think they want us to open that. So this is like a cage where maybe they would dress the bull or do whatever they had to do, get them ready. And again, here is a passageway where the bull ain't getting through, but you can get through to escape. And ultimately leading dun, da, 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 to the bull ring itself. So this is the bull ring. There's obviously no bullfight today. But this is actively used. Unfortunately, I believe this, the, the season they told me starts in April and ends uh, September 29th, which is basically the day we got into town. Starting October 1st is quote unquote rainy season. We haven't seen a drop of rain yet, but perhaps it is the end of summer. This was a sport designed for nobility, okay? The richer you were, just like in a concert, the better your seat was. So people would have these boxes and you have this stadium style seating and you have seating up in the veranda area. And this was for the people of privilege. It's just really amazing. It's in remarkably good condition. So this talks about the history of the bullfighting.
This is, place is just very, very rich in history. I'm really glad that we're able to be here and, and share this with you guys. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. That way, every time a new video drops, you'll automatically be notified and you can check it out. Here are some of the bulls that I guess didn't fare too well in the fight. And here are the actual outfits worn by the matador. People back then were a lot smaller, huh? These are adult size uniforms, but from the 1500s. Here is the cape, and here are the different swords that the matador would use. So, you've probably seen these before, and I don't know the name, but these are really designed to just piss the bull off and get the crowd started, okay? This is not going to kill the bull. It's going to just go underneath his skin and stay there. It's got that barbed hook. That's just to get the party started. Then, as the event progressed, just like in a boxing match, you spend all that money, you get dressed up, you go to the boxing match, you don't want the fighter to go down on the first blow or in the first round. You, you want to see a fight. So this sword wouldn't penetrate but it would prick him. Then this next sword would only go in about six inches, and that um, guard there looks to be adjustable. Then, I guess when the time was right, they pulled out the real sword, this long sword, and that could do some damage. The matador would also carry a fixed blade knife, I guess in case things got a little hairy he could probably try to cut the jugular of the bull. I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, as much as I am presenting it to you. This is just really phenomenal, really well presented and just exquisite condition. So we just went over this, the bullfighting costumes. talks about what the costumes were constructed of. Leather. Padded with fancy decorations, but leather underneath to give a little bit of protection. There you can see what it looks like, the actual leather leather without all the fancy ornamentation. So this was designed to protect the matador. And here's what it looked like once it was adorned with the silk and different thread and so on and so forth. But this is actually the base costume, the leather. And it looks to be pretty thick leather. Here's another outfit. This one belonged to Rafael Gomez Ortiga. This one looks to be even older. This is the vest. It's easier to say the fellow's nickname, Nina de Palmer. I think the name is Cainto Ordinez. And there you can see the shoes. Here's a picture from a bullfight in 1954. In commemoration of the second anniversary and the birth of Pedro Romero in, in 1954. 